Life sciences aren't just becoming a health imperative, they're becoming an economic one at that. I'll get to that in a minute. I wanna go through the National Health Survey that's really shining some lights on what's been happening over pretty much the 2000s, over the 17 year period between 2000 and 2001 survey and the survey that came out in 2016-17. The differences are quite large and unfortunately they're not necessarily to the better either. Having a look at our overall health and our overall well-being ratings, those of us that believe that our health is either very good or excellent currently sits at about 56%. You compare that to the original survey back in 2000-2001, we saw 82% of the population believing that they were sitting in those categories. Interesting, we haven't seen an actual change going on in those that believe that their health is either fair to poor. It's been sitting at 15, but in the main, we're actually sliding away. Why that's happening is probably down for debate, but what I'd really also like to point out is if you go slightly more granular and have a look at our key risk factors, things like smoking, things like alcohol, and obesity, overweightness, two out of the three have improved quite dramatically, and that's particularly around things like smoking and alcohol. Two risk factors, two areas that the government, that private enterprises spend a lot of time and a lot of ed education and effort improving. So if we have a look at the numbers, those that now identify as smokers, that's having a smoke daily, now sits at 155 to 16%. Compare that to back in 2000, 2001, it was sitting at 24%. It's a really good improvement. Men still and well and truly outstrip women, but we are moving away. If you look also at the younger generation, those between 15 and 44, they're really falling away. Only around about 12% of that group of population now identify as daily smokers from 20% back 17 years ago. Alcohol is also quite good, maybe not as strong, but it is certainly there. Those consuming two standard drinks or more per day is now down to 30%. It was as high as 38% four years ago. The two standard drink policy actually wasn't in 17 years, so not comparable. But if you also have a look at the younger movements again, you're seeing real positive signs and those between 15 and 44 are very much sliding away and those that are actually consuming alcohol more than daily is also sliding to levels of about one in four of us. I think the most important thing and the, the really the most impressive part of it is that 15 to 17 year olds, those that are in that age bracket, two thirds of them have never had a drink in their life in the last survey. Compare that to one in two four years ago. That's a really, really positive sign to show that education and monitoring and understanding your overall health is improving. But as I said, two out of three are doing it right, one of them isn't, and unfortunately, our waistline continues to be our biggest issue. Those that are identified as being either overweight or obese now total 68% of our entire population. Compare that to 58% three years ago, and it was 52% back in 2000, 2001. That's a very steady, regular increase, something that we certainly don't wanna be seeing, and that's why long-term chronic health issues like diabetes is well and truly up with 5.1% of the population. We know about our heart and also our cardiac issues, we also know about how important it is to monitor our blood because our blood pressure and our hypertension levels continue to move up at the same sort of levels. And that is why it's not just a health one, but an economic one that we have to really look at with regards to what is going on in life science and why life science is so important for both of those categories. We spent $164 billion on health last year, particularly in things like hospitals and doctor services. If we can get more efficient with that, and we certainly are with what life science is developing, if we can start bringing in primary preventers that can also help that through life science, again, something that is also happening, we will hopefully start to see these numbers decline. The economic impact is clearly positive. It means that more people are able to work, more people are actually able to be product, rather have productivity at the positive rather than the negative. And that all has to feed into why life sciences needs to be part and thought of as the future of our investment and why it will remain quite an area for both government, private, and personal consumption.